we turn to the no bullshit power. Let's just end breaking news. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. No bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to No Bullshit News Hour, <laughs> June 4th, 2021. All right, we're fixing the internet. Except dumb, dumb Mark over here went upstairs uh, and unplugged everything. You did. Say it. Come on. It's no... Bullshit or not? That is a loose way of defining it. Okay. But I'll take it. I'll take the blame. I'll take the blame. Which what led to another problem. Which led to another domino. To another domino. But we're here. Yeah. We're and here. we got Bernie in the house. Bernie, pro bono, big fan of the show, a brother of the community. He's doing it pro bono. He's fixing it. Yeah. So it's not going to happen anymore unless Mark keep his paws off the power. I'm out of here. I'm leaving. <laughs> anyway, folks, listen. Uh, very big show. Right, we're going to talk about the nursing homes. We smoked them out. There were hearings yesterday. Joining us will be Janice Dean, the godmother of holding Cuomo's feet to the fire in New York. Want to talk to her about what's going on here, what what she's been going through, uh, the blowback on us. Also, more bullshit for the victims of the Flint water poisoning. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, with us is Mr. Flint himself, Arthur Woodson. He'll be joining us. Just, just. It's like the it never stops. Tuskegee experiment yeah. in Flint. Yeah. This is, this is, That's it, Charlie. Isn't That's it? it? Right there. Isn't it, Karen? And Karen's That's with it. us. You just, you just summed it up. That's it. How I can mean, we, how can we be doing this to each other? I don't know. That's a good question. And why are you doing it to the same group of people repeatedly? I mean, yeah. what did they do to you? <laughs> it's like, what is it? You know what? When I when I look at my name, my brother lives in Flint, right? His wife lives in Flint. Uh, this is family. This isn't political party bullshit. Just fix it, right? Mm -hmm. Right, Mark? Fix, fix the shit. And it's a bullshit. But, okay, before we, we, we get into the nursing homes, I uh, want to bring a word from our sponsors, our friend, Luke Nowacki over there, with this backing track from Flint City Councilman Maurice Davis. There it is. Overreaction is not a strategy, folks. Not a strategy. I think we're learning that. Right? You're gonna buy the home, what are you gonna do? You're gonna sell the home? Burying your head in the sand and hoping it all turns out is not the way to do it. You call my friend Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Wealth, 248-663-4748 for financial and rational advice. And Luke is a good buddy Great. who helps us crunch the numbers on this show. He does, he loves numbers. The man's a savant. Mm -hmm. So look, give him a call, right? Get a strategy, get your future in order, figure out what what you're gonna do 248-663-4748 and as always our dear friend grace carol said american coney island invites you down to have lunch it's open now it's free come to the detroit landmark american coney island turn up a little bit for me please it's not free charlie did i say it was free yeah you did <laughs> okay i'll tell you what i'll tell you what we're gonna do the first person to hit that donate button, hey. $100, so that we can help somebody in Flint, $100, I will treat you to lunch at American Coney Island, right? We will get together, you will Facebook message me, we'll get together, lunch is and, on me. And for $200, I'll join you. Whoa, ho! Oh. Listen, 200 bucks, lunch with me and Karen at the most famous restaurant in Michigan, one of the best in the world, American Coney Island. For $300, I will stay away and not unplug anything. <laughs> for hey, that, this, this will be the cheapest date I ever had. So All right, listen, so there we go. For, <laughs> for $200. Yep. Somebody right now, somebody hit it. Karen, you let me know if anybody hits it. Lunch is on us, me and Karen. And you can get it all out and talk about what you need to talk to. And we will listen to you. Even throwing a beer. Hey, How's that? Okay. Nice. 
I, I, I love the look. Would you unplug the music, Mark? Which one do you want? This one. Well, that's what you think. It's a good groove. Oh, you want that one? Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that business to take care of. Let's let's do this now. We finally smoked them out, ladies and gentlemen. Whitmer's health director testified yesterday about nursing home deaths, and the director admitted. The reporting is an honor system, and her department has not verified any of those numbers and is, in fact, unable to. Now, listen, we edited up what we thought was the most germane part of her testimony. Take a listen. So what we know with our death certificate data is that it is not accurate at this point to be reflective of our nursing home death information, which is why we do not rely on that and we do not report from that for nursing home data. We rely on the nursing homes to do their own reporting, and that is the number that we report for nursing home death data. So take my word for now, it. Now, when we need to, and we will, at some point, at some have point. to do a verification or a validation against the self-reported numbers and what we have in our death certificates, because those death certificates are public record of note, and that is, in the future, the data place that people will go to identify different, you know, aspects of, for data analysis and, and um, summary when they're looking back on how this pandemic affected the state. What? We do not at this point actually have the data points that we need hmm. to do that match. Whoa. We've known for years that our data collection platforms and public health were outdated. So there's a reason we can't do these matches right now and we have to do them manually, which is we don't have the interoperability between our systems to do it. Our computers don't work. 12 or fewer residents, they are not self-reporting. We do not have those numbers, correct? We are not requiring them to self-report. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. The ones that are 13 above, all of those are reporting? No, not all of those. So if we don't have all of them reporting, there could be a contention that, you know, they're, they're not reporting deaths. Or maybe they haven't experienced any deaths. I don't so, know the answer to that. So when we do a vital records review like they did between March 1 and June 30, are they catching those numbers that are not reported in that review, that 648 number? When we do a review of death certificates, we're not doing a comparison to the self-reporting. Those two things don't go together. Why not? Why, once you want to see if they're matching up, to me that would be pretty I can't tell sense. if they're matching up I because I do not have the data points from the self-reporting I don't have the data. To that match. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So to be clear, that 648 death number was not, you didn't take that number and add it to the existing long-term yeah. care facility death number. That's, you believe that's already baked into that number? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So the local media must have gone to the executive toilet at this point during the testimony, because here's some of the headlines we were treated to afterwards. Michigan nursing home COVID death data is accurate. And Michigan health director stands by nursing home COVID-19 death tracking. They report that the director defends her numbers. You just heard. They never bothered to report who and what she was defending that against. So who was it? Last week, the Mackinac Center for Public Policy and I published our report calling the state's uh, numbers incomplete nonsense, just as you heard the director say herself. The media never followed up on our report. They pretended it didn't exist. Why? Why does the media pretend? Ask yourself, why is the media so bewitched by Governor Andrew Cuomo's creepy office conduct? For the same reason, the media is intoxicated with Governor Gretchen Whitmer's little airplane lies. It's a misdirect by the press corps to cover the fa their failure to expose the truth. <clears throat> Instead of lazily uh, going along with the lies, Lies that the press must own up to since they amplified those lies and broadcast them to you. Untold, untold more elderly died in long-term care facilities from COVID-19 than either governor admits. Both Whitmer and Cuomo knew the data they were feeding the public was, at best, misleading and incomplete. You just heard the director. You just heard the director. But the press didn't bother to hold power to account no matter what their Twitter pages say. 
Now comes those startling admissions Thursday morning from Elizabeth Hertel, the director of the Department of Health and Human Services, in her testimony to the House Oversight Committee. She danced like a politician, saying she believes all 435 nursing homes provide accurate information on COVID deaths. But they only give numbers. That's all they give. That's all they give. Then she said she can't say for sure uh, if those numbers are accurate because the death certificates still need to be vetted more carefully to match them against the self-reporting, which can't be done because they're only self-reporting numbers. That is, the state is not checking. So we don't know if nursing home folks who died in the hospitals were included in those self-reported numbers as they're supposed to be. That's exactly what Andrew Cuomo's government did. Deaths in the nursing home, deaths in the hospital, they're supposed to be one. We're not checking. Then there's those adult foster care facilities with 13 or more residents. Remember, we talked about it. Oh, yeah. Who are required to report their deaths. Hertel said only 273 out of 311 have reported to the state. And the ones with 12 or less residents, they don't have to report at all. That's 25% of the whole population. That's 22,000 people we didn't bother to track that we said we were going to. The numbers are whack. The bottom line is this. We don't know the real numbers, which are surely higher than we know. The director admitted that much. The computers don't talk to each other. What a mess. What a joke. Why are accurate numbers important? Numbers drive policy. Accurate numbers could have saved lives. All this, all the questions, all the testimony, all the reporting should have been done months ago had the press pushed harder. Instead, theirs was a happy to be there sort of deal. In New York, the media starred as bit players in Cuomo's Emmy Award winning press conference, Serial. In Michigan, if you remember, it was see us standing next to Big Gretch in the nationwide VP sweepstakes. They were right there in the same virtual room, virtually standing alongside the governor at all those virtual press conferences, sunning themselves in electronified national limelight. All the while, the elderly were dying in their wards. The media blithely accepted Whitmer's claims of science and data without ever seeing any science or data besides the daily vomit of positivity projections and growth rate variations and vital record reviews. The most central and basic data point, long-term care deaths, went unchallenged. The press were meek and outmaneuvered, and now they ought to be embarrassed. The frail and old were dying. Who was trying to independently account for them, to help them? So, to right their wrong, without ever having to admit the wrong, the New York press corps runs with the Cuomo harassment scandal. I'm not trying to diminish that. The Michigan media picks up on the airplane. In this way, a pound of flesh can be had without the messiness of having to acknowledge that they were duped. And look, everybody gets it wrong. You correct the wrong. This one is going along with the fairy tale. If you need any proof, let me remind you the investigation we published last week. We had to sue the Whitmer administration just to get public statistics. We found that the state did not and does not keep an accurate tally of its long-term care facility deaths. We uncovered that the state commissioned a random examination of death certificates last summer. So many led back to these facilities, 44 percent, that the state never bothered checking again. These dead were never added to the official total, as you just heard, because these geniuses in Lansing were afraid of a double count that they claim they couldn't cross-check anyway. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just in time, all of this for the hypercharged, hyperpartisan election cycle. But what about we the people? Remember, Cuomo's true nursing home death toll was 50% higher than he originally claimed before getting caught in a lie. And it may be worse in Michigan, but we may never really know. So we need an investigation. Attorney Jane and, uh, Dana Nessel is silent. 
though she did take a moment this week to issue a press statement commending Governor Whitmer for declaring June as, wait for it. What? Elder Abuse Awareness Month, oh. of all things. And they could practice what they preach for once. So there's that. And then there's this video of Madame Nessel prancing about the Capitol Rotunda in celebration of Gay Pride Month. <laughs> Dana Nessel. And with me today is State Senator Jeremy Moss. And now that we have your attention, we'd like to take a moment to welcome you to Pride Month. So As there's that. Happy Pride Month, by the way. It's going to be fun. The thousands of human beings who died in nursing homes are the biggest casualty in all this. But truth, science, and fact were also brutalized. The governor claims her executive order did not force nursing homes to take in COVID-positive patients. The media accepts that and prints it. But she did force nursing homes to do it. All the press had to do was dig. Instead, they took dictation. The latest smoking gun? A memo from the Healthcare Association of Michigan, which represents nursing homes and rehab facilities. It was sent to Whitmer and the Health Department on April 16th, 2020. It reads in part, quote, the vast majority of nursing facilities will be mandated to create a dedicated hub with no funding or PPE to care for the COVID-19 affected residents. While most buildings will be forced to do this, many will not be able to because of physical plant restrictions. You guys remember the plastic sheets? Oh, yeah. The lack of adequate PPE and insufficient staff to care for those residents. You remember our friend, the Porter Brian. Yeah. You remember our nursing friends. Yep. You remember Dr. Whistleblower at Cobo Hall. <sighs> Even worse. The statement continues, this provision will introduce COVID-19 into units where it is not yet present, endangering residents who are the most vulnerable to this virus. Because of these dangers and restrictions, this provision should be eliminated, end quote. But the provision was not eliminated. Rather, Whitmer signed the executive order the next day. Politicians in the press, I can't tell much difference anymore. But no matter which side of the aisle they sit on, no matter which master they serve, they should all want the truth. There is nothing progressive about letting old people die in the darkness. There are no family values in that. And having said that, I'd like to welcome in Janice Dean, Meteorologist with Fox News, uh, been leading the charge. Janice, I, I love you. You know, all this stuff about Cuomo only came out because, you know, you kept pushing. Even the Empire Center for uh, Public Policy says that. What was it like for you? I mean, what was the press doing? Were you a dingbat? Was it lonely? Were people saying, hey, maybe she's got a point here? No, it's been a year. And at the very beginning, uh, I don't think anybody really believed me. You know, I <clears throat> had a tragedy in my family. Um, it was very difficult to talk about it. My husband, you know, to this day still can't watch any of my reports because he's a very private person. His, his family were very private. They weren't broadcasters. But because I wasn't seeing the coverage in the press and because I have a microphone, uh, I felt it was important uh, for me to tell my story. And at the very beginning, I was up against a machine. People told me he was the Terminator. There was nothing that could bring him down. Um, but, you know, people started to listen. I was able to get on Fox. I was able to, you know, write some op-eds for the for USA Today. And I'm grateful for some of those, um, you know, 
for, for some of those publications that took a chance on my story when nobody wanted to hear it. And the pandemic politician was doing the rounds on CNN and ABC and NBC and all of the big, uh, AB, you know, the uh, big alphabet channels uh, promoting himself, his wonderful, excellent leadership. And then of course he was writing the book that we now know he got over $5 million for. Wow. And at the time was covering up those numbers to get that payday. What, what does it matter? You know, you know, like he, he famously said, they died, they died. I mean, if, he, if he, he wasn't such a creep and a liar, you, you kind of understand what he's saying. So why, why does it matter where they died? I mean, it's over now. It matters because, like you said, it, it can affect public policy. If we don't have the accurate numbers, if we don't know what happened in nursing homes, then how the heck are we supposed to go forward? You know, I just listened to that Charlie Brown, uh, you know, the the um, the conference that they had uh, with your health director, and it was like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I mean, she has no idea what she's talking about. She's just, you know, trying, you know, she word salad to, you know, try to, you know, move the goalposts that they, this is why they don't have the accurate numbers. What, what is going on? I mean, I think if I got on the phone every day and called every nursing home in New York, I could get accurate numbers. Oh, great point. Right. Yeah. So where where is that accountability? I'll you know, I'll keep doing what I can. I just wrote an op ed this last week on foxnews.com about how this governor is continue to go on television like nothing's wrong, even though he has a federal investigation against him, an FBI investigation against him. He's got at least nine women that have come out of the woodwork now uh, to talk about his creepy behavior. Uh, the fact that he gave covid tests to friends and family when nursing homes couldn't get them to test those infected patients. There is a laundry list of why this governor uh, should be impeached and possibly in jail. Um, but, you know, it's it's still an upward climb. And, and I applaud what you're doing in Michigan. I think there should be uh, a 9-11 style com a commission in D.C. for not only governors like Cuomo and Whitmer, but we also have New Jersey's governor and Pennsylvania's governor. And for a while, Governor Newsom was also putting COVID positive patients in nursing homes. What's the origin of those uh, those mandates? Why? Was it based on science? We know it wasn't. We all knew that putting COVID positive patients in nursing homes was going to be fire through dry grass. By the way, those are the words of Governor Cuomo because he, he knew all along that that was going to be a detriment. So why did he do it? I think if we get to the bottom of why those orders were in place and we chase the money, because I believe it was hospital lobbyists that you know, they weren't paying customers. We had to put them somewhere else, back into the nursing homes instead of using the Comfort Ship, the Javits Center, and all the makeshift hospitals that were there that went empty. That oh, went no. empty. I just uh, paid 500 bucks to get about 750 documents hmm. for our Javits Center. It's called TCF, right? We, we had a very prominent person on this program, you know, uh, had to cover their identity a little bit, but when the time's right, he'll be back. What did you do? So when you say, you talk about Newsom, you talk about Cuomo, you talk about Pennsylvania, look, I get calls from all over the place. Can you help us? I, I can't help you. Yeah. I'm just trying to help my own state. So it's true. I got a feeling they cook these things everywhere, Janice, everywhere. I don't know about Florida, but well, somebody in Florida should look at Florida because nobody in my goddamn state wanted to look. Yeah. Well, the problem. Well, and that's why we need people. We need people like you. Uh, you know, it, I get the same thing. And, and as much as I would like to, you know, shout on the rooftop for every state and every family, there's only so much I can do. And that's why we need help from others. You know, call your local politicians, demand answers. Uh, we don't need hearings like we just saw in Michigan, where it's just blah, 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 hmm. data doesn't work, computers aren't working, that kind of thing. That's just nonsense. Uh, if you, again, called up every nursing home and demanded information on who died of COVID, we could get those numbers. One of the big differences in my mind between New York and Michigan is that your attorney general has the balls to actually look into this and do a full investigation. Are you aware or do you, have you heard of any kind of, is there political retribution for it? I would think the public would be behind her all the way. 
We'll see. Um, I haven't heard much lately. You know, that, that report came out in January, and although that seemed like a, a great thing at the time because the dam was finally breaking and somebody from his party uh, was, was saying yes, uh, he did not count those that died in the hospital and the numbers were misrepresented by at least 50%. You know, we're now into June, and we haven't heard word of anything else uh, from those investigations. Well, let me say this. But this is what's going to happen, having spoken to your attorney general's office. That, what's that? Uh, having spoken to your attorney general's office, here's how that's going to play out. That paper that she put together wasn't designed to do a gotcha on Cuomo. It was put together to find out what was going in the, on in the nursing homes so the nursing homes could be criminally charged for not following protocol, right? There's really nothing that you could charge Cuomo with except maybe lying or abuse of funds. You know, I mean, huh. that that's how it got put together. We don't need, I just want an accounting because at least in New York, Janice, they were counting. They knew how many people in the nursing homes died in the nursing homes and how many people from the nursing homes were shipped to the hospital and died and they decided to hide one. Here, uh -huh. we just decided not to do it. Which is yeah. worse? Of course. That's worse. Yeah. Uh, you know, all we can do is continue to advocate. And I have to believe we're on the side of the angels. And that is bigger than any last name of a governor. Um, and I can't believe he's still in office, to be honest with you. I, it's, it's unbelievable. There are, are leaders that have left for lesser charges. And, you know, you just keep digging the fact that he was using state resources to write the damn book for $5 million, uh, the book of lies, full of lies. I hope they throw it again. I throw, I hope they throw it at him in court <laughs> because that book can be used against him. At least your governor didn't write a $5 million leadership book in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but listen, listen, I got to go pick up my kids because they're, they're getting off school, but I want to continue the conversation and I want to continue to work together uh, on this because I believe in this, I, and I believe we have to fight for those that don't have a voice. All right. Thank you, Susan. I just wanted to let, if I can, Charlie, just two seconds. You've got a ton of comments on our social media saying that you're an inspiration. They appreciate what you've done and how you've done it, and they support you. So I just wanted to let you know you've got a lot of support out here. Well, listen, uh, we're in this together, and I I am so grateful that, that you know, the fight continues and people like you guys are are raising awareness and you know and shouting from the rooftops and we need more of that and i promise right now that, that you and i are going to continue to do this and we'll do whatever we have to do if we have to go bang down doors in on capitol hill we'll do that my friend okay God bless you all right be safe say hello to your husband okay Mwah. So, Charlie, we aren't shouting from the rooftop. We're shouting from the lower level, but that, that still works, too. <laughs> That's true. Well, I, I got to make one important distinction. She's decided. Okay. She's decided, fuck him, he's got to go, right? You mm -hmm. heard that. Yeah. I'm not doing that. It's been heavy. I don't mean to make it personal, but we are a community. You, you can't believe the weight coming down. You can't, you can't even believe it. Look, look, look at, as we started at the top of the show. I do a report, nobody wants to report on it, and then they hold this kangaroo hearing. Yeah. She steps in this shit, and then all of a sudden, I'm the foil. This is heavy. I'm not advocating. Look, you all decide. You all decide who you want to represent you. That's, I love this country for that. I want you to have the accurate information to make that decision. I want, I want you know, all these Biden bucks coming everywhere? Your computers don't talk to each other in the health department. We just went through a fucking pandemic and nobody said anything about it. Guess the fucking computers. It makes no sense how antiquated all their stuff is. Well, what they say so. And the next step is an investigation. But I'm almost to the point is, will we even believe that? That's a good point. Is it going to be honest? I mean, I don't want to be that cynical about it, but yeah. Who wow. made the decision not to even track 22,000 people? There was just not a, a will. I mean, there's always resources. If they want to go, like she said, she could go to each place and go, how many did you have? How many did you have? But there's not a will to do that, it seems. Well, in, look, in you know, state. and let's be honest. They, they tried this, Karen, last summer, right? Mm -hmm. They took 1,500 random death certificates and tracked 44% of random, them back yeah. to, I assume, all long-term care facilities. 
Have we ever had a number posted in this state where it was 44 percent? Did that just give you a window into the, the, the depths of this problem? Was that not in the middle of a really crazy election year? Why did we stop? So out of 19,000 deaths, we've taken a look at 1,500. Wow. No way, man. It was too much work. They said it was too That's much work. Too time consuming. Okay, I'm looking at Arthur down there. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at you out there. We shut everything down, and it was supposed to be so people like this didn't clog the hospitals and die in case you got hit by a car and you needed a hospital bed. That was the whole motivation. Yep. yep. Now to find out, it's data. Remember? Data, data, data. What fucking data? And, and fix the fucking computer systems so they will talk to each other for whatever the next thing you need to track is. Yeah, I'm going to just say uh, Why that. is that so hard? People my, my, complain about our technology and the flaws. <laughs> <that we laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, At least we're honest about it. <laughs> we're not responsible for anybody's life. So, I mean, if you certainly get upset justifiably when you can't log on to the show because we're having tech difficulties then gee imagine the rage and anger you should feel with that of the state well and considering i should be careful what we wish for considering what happened when they uh, updated the unemployment software too so yeah that didn't work <laughs> i would say so yeah it did not work right did work no it i mean not it didn't li literally did not work the software nothing's working that's what it's exposed nothing's working nothing but has it ever charlie Great I mean, question. Isn't that almost, I mean, isn't that almost what the whole purpose of all this is? Is just continuity of mediocrity, and just that's just that's just what it is. I mean, and it shouldn't be that way because this is not what we deserve. This is not what we expect. This is not what we pay for with our tax dollars. But so why do we tolerate it? Uh, and watch, folks. Here's the thing. Again, just a dude. I'm just a dude. You don't think this is my first rodeo, do you? Remember Fukano and the jail financing? Remember all that? I know yeah. when I see it. Remember Duggan and the demolitions and the numbers and the data sets? I know it when I see it. Remember Snyder and Flint and the contracts and the water treatment plant? I know it when I see it. I know when I'm being bullshitted. I know when I hear some testimony. You just heard it. We can't check those data points against the data points. Those numbers are specifically nursing homes self-reported. What? What? Okay. Our system doesn't work. All right, look, now we want to we get to Flint, but before we do, we want to remind you that uh, now's the time, right? Rates are low. Oh, yeah. Refinance that house, right? Mm -hmm. Lower your note. Get some money back. Get some money back. You know what I mean? Make those improvements. How, how should I do that, though, Charlie? Oh, well, uh, who, who should I contact? It's right here. I like, I, I, it's like I, I, don't I know. forgot. I want, it's DavidHallMortgage.com. Oh, okay. Right? You know this number. It should be uh, on a magnet, on your fridge, 248-308-5000. Right? Or remember, just go to the website and click to get started. DavidHallMortgage.com. Your number one mortgage dude. And in the state of Michigan. Super fast. That's what I like about them. Super mortgage dude. Is that what you guys said? Super <laughs> mortgage dude. Okay. And then when you try, you get that, that refi, right? And yeah. you're having problems with your city. Oh, man. And they don't want to let you put that porch on. You're just a little guy. Sounds like a nightmare. It's big government again trying to dip into your pockets. Can anybody help me? Oh, you try ADR. It's pretty simple, right? ADR consultants are the ones you call when you need to get something done right on time and on budget. And it's... Breaking news? Well, wait, it's not breaking news. It's not vetted, but I'm hearing. So, Amazon, listen. You're building the big um, wish fulfillment center at State Fairgrounds. That's great. But all those ancillary projects that are promised for Detroit, am I hearing right? Hmm. Are you pulling out of that? Is it? You can't deal with Detroit? Oh, sticky finger Detroit? Too much this, too much that. Is that what I'm hearing? I'll check. I'll check. Do they really call I'm, it? I'm hearing from some contractors. Do they really? And they even them? said that they would hire those as long as they were not operating uh, heavy machinery or driving that may test positive for marijuana, which, if you think, Charlie, has been the prevention or the preventative component <sighs> of Detroiters being hired first in spite of the promises for all these other first jobs. That might be so, Karen. That's right. But on the macro level. Right, I got you. Hey, Amazon big boys, if you, you're having trouble, they're not living up to it, right? You know what you do? You call ADR. 
they uh, specialize in deconstruction, construction, demolition, rehabilitation, project management, owner representative service, technology deployments. Get it done the right way without excuses. Ethical, honest, smart, and discreet. Call Barry Ellen Tuck for free consultation. 248-318-9424. Right on. Right on? Go right fix on. your shit. All right, now. No other way to introduce our next guest. Says he's muted. Let's unmute him. Who is in charge of muting? There he is. <laughs> Mr. Flint himself, Arthur Woodson. I don't like to say community activist. I don't like to say he's running for Flint City Council. He's just one of those guys that knows that he's a reporter. Okay. He knows everything. He knows everybody. What's up, Arthur? Hey, how's it going, uh, Mr. LaDuff? Uh, <laughs> glad uh, to be on your show. You know, this is the first time I've ever been on your show. And it's a very nice menagerie behind you. That's, it looks like, oh, China doll, a couple of uh, snow globes, a few clocks. A lot of breakables. Looks like my grandma's <laughs> house. What's going on with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I wanted to have this uh, setting. Uh, you know, my aunt, um, she, she was fighting uh, the water crisis, and she passed away last August from cancer. My cousin passed away, her, which was her daughter, passed away uh, the year prior uh, from cancer also. So, uh, you know, it brings back memories of, uh, of her fight, and that's what keeps me fighting and keeps me going, you know, the memory of her and making sure that uh, I do everything humanly possible to uh, help fight and, and get accomplished what she wanted accomplished. My brother, I'm gonna, let's, let's just take a second to uh, remember your loved ones. And maybe one more second to remember the dozens of people that died of Legionnaires in Flint. Let's take them one more second. It's mad main catastrophe, government made catastrophe. And so, right. and so we're in the midst, we're having Yawa, in the midst of the Flint water crisis settlement, by the way, peanuts, mm -hmm. right? 600 and something million dollars, and a third of it goes to the lawyers. And one of these lawyers groups gets the bright idea, hey, guess what? The more lead you got in you, right? Yeah. The more money you can get. Okay, yeah. Okay, you're, you're you won't get $14,000, kid. You'll get $15,000 if you got a lot of lead in your bones. How do we do that? Well, we take the Fisher, Thermo Fisher scientific scanner device, a lead scanner, and we take pictures of you. Except the manufacturer just wrote a letter saying, uh, that's meant for mining holes and recycling yards, and you shouldn't point it at people. Oh, boy. Is this right, Arthur? Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't point it at people. It wasn't FDA approved, and they just got it approved February the 24th of this year. So uh, the company, everybody's been filing motions since the beginning of this year, since October last year, matter of fact. And Judge Levy. Before we get into the legalese, wait, other. wait, before we get into legalese. All right. So they take this mining equipment. They take pictures. How many people did they take pictures of? And when did they do uh, it? They, they started last year. They started before the settlement was even uh, pre-approved. And that's letting us know there's so many different things going on in this lawsuit. How many people? Talk, how many people? How many people do you figure it, they it, took? I, a say, I say about 6,000 people. What? Um, yeah, I say about 6,000 people. Uh, uh, Napoli and uh, Corey Stern, they had access to it prior to the pre approved settlement, right? And then uh, Leopold. Wait, 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 wait. Let me do that. I got to do this because you're living it. So what I got to do, right? People don't know any of this. Speak generally, right? They don't know Leopold or Skolnick okay. or, you know, they don't. So okay, 6,000 yeah. people. Does this include children? Yes, this includes children. This, this includes all their clients. They, these two, uh, Corey Stern Doing it. and Napoli, they are the lead co-counsel. All right. Those are the individuals. They they are they have the individuals. So they are the lead counsels for all the individual lawyers. Leopold and 
uh, Mike Pitt, Michael Pitts, is the co-lead uh, class action. So they are over all the class action lawyers, and it's like 144 lawyers. So there's 144 they, lawyers up in Flint. Oh my God! Correct. With their sticky fingers all over the place. Well, look how much money Correct. they're getting from it. And then they're t they're taking uh, mining equipment and taking pictures of pregnant women and children. And Correct. the and well, the, the, two, and the oh, hey the two lead the two lead lawyers, which was uh, Corey Stern. We don't and care Nappy. about the names because again, nobody gets. It. Let's speak uh, generally. Okay. Okay. Uh, the the two lead lawyers they had access to the two portable uh, bone scans. So they started out early uh, before everybody else and started scanning all their people. And the other lawyers didn't have access to this bone scan. So this is what made all the other lawyers and everybody else start looking into it. And lo and behold, uh, the, uh, the doctors from Mount Sinai, New York, and U of M, they were against it. And Dr. Reynolds here in Flint is against it. Dr. Mona Tish here uh, is against it. And these two are pediatricians, and they say it's harmful to kids. And these people have been doing it to pregnant women. And you don't suppose a wow. pregnant woman, without even putting a lead uh, jacket over, was, was, was done about two, three weeks ago. That's and amazing. they don't have any professionals up in there looking over this in the company, the company, the manufacturer. They said, do not, do not use this equip equipment or point it at any humans, period. Jesus, so period. the federal judge overseeing, is, federal, is it a federal judge? Levy. Yes, federal judge. Okay, so did Levy okay this? Yes. I mean, she's been fighting. Here's the problem. They want to brush this or, 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 or tweet this under the rug. They don't. They want the water crisis gone. Governor Whitmer wants this water crisis gone, out of sight, out of mind. Mayor Neely, he's going along right along with it. I mean, he's not saying anything, not fighting for the people. He don't want to fight. He don't feel like this is a political fight that he wants to fight with Governor Whitmer. He's not standing up for the people. Governor Whitmer, if you notice, hasn't said not one thing since she's been in office. She made a lot of promises, but she has not fulfilled any promises that she has made to the people when she got voted in here in the city of Flint well, you got, or even in Detroit. Well, you got a bone scan. So let me ask you this. Well, well, let me ask you this. So these lawyers, there's some class action. There's some with a, a, a thousand specific clients, right? That's 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 right. the uh, one side. On the other side, it's the state, right? They're suing the state. Who defends the state in this uh, case? Attorney General. The Attorney General. Huh. Um, attorney General Nessel. Dana Nessel. So did Dana Nessel lodge a complaint or uh, an agreement that this mining equipment should be pointed at children. Did they speak up at all? No, they didn't. They, they, matter of fact, they opposed the objectors. Uh, oh, wait, they, so they, so, so they uh, people objected this being used and they opposed that? Right. You know why? Wow. They were busy. <laughs> take it off that's crazy arthur yeah here's the problem and, and you all said something earlier and we have what they call a communication meeting with state mdhhs uh, genesee county health department every thursday and when covid started i addressed the same issue about the nursing home uh where they were putting people in the nursing home um uh, that was positive with people that were negative. And it was a major issue with me. And I still disagree with what they did on that. But when you all were speaking about it, I thought about lions when you all said you got to die from something. Remember in court, that was one of the main things that Nick Lyons said to the people in an email about the people here in the city of Flint. We all had to die from something with legionnaires. 
So this is not a, a, a Republican or Democrat thing. This Thank is uh, just a politician that don't give a damn about the people that they supposed to be working for. Exactly. So no matter what, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or whatever, uh, they don't give a damn about you once they get in office. Hmm. Once they get in office, it's all about their pockets and their political ambitions and where they want to be four years later. So our thing is, instead of us fighting and this Republican is better or this Democrat is better, the people supposed to have the power. The government supposed to fear us. We don't supposed to fear the government. And as long as they have us fighting each other over race, over uh, you know political affiliation, we're gonna be in the same situation. And it was more than just lead in the water. We have a cancer cluster. I mean, a ca cancer cluster that's going on where people are dying, and they're using COVID to cover it up. We have somebody dying. Our cancer here in the city of Flint, you get stage one in January, you have stage four by June, and you're dead. You have one cancer, that one cancer turns into five cancers. It's unheard of. They set the narrative to where it's all about lead. But we had TTHM, we had E. coli, we had Legionnaires, we had PFAS, we had cyanide, arsenic, manganese, nickel, mercury, aluminum, you name it, we had it, PCB. We had all this in our water, a cocktail. But all they want to do is change out the straws, which is uh, the service lines, and leave the water mains so it's still there. My water still, if I let it sit for three days, it's still pushing out brown water. Our in-home uh, filtration uh, plumbing hasn't been changed. Everything is still in effect right now. Governor Whitmer hasn't done anything. Mayor what? Neely hasn't done anything. Eagle, EPA, MPHHS, CDC, ATSDR, County, none of them have done anything for the people here in the city of Flint, but been quiet, out that, of that, sight, that's out of what mind, we say. That's what we say stuck. here. Hey, but at least, are they at least going to give you a copy of your bone scan? Well, they give it to them, but but here's the thing. Put right? that on your fridge? The bone scan, <laughs> is it, if, it, if it's soft tissue, it's a reliable device for the people. It, the older you are, the more reliable it is to really uh, detect. But what are, what are they giving you when they do it? Well, let's stop for here. Younger, let's stop. Let's stop. Look, I mean, are you really basing a dollar amount on a, on a scan of your bones? Is that what they're doing up there? Karen, you had a question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they they basing it they basing it the scan on, on on I mean the money on that and also if you over sixty years old and you died from Legionnaires the family only gets three hundred thousand dollars. But are they setting? Is somebody being set up for another round of uh, I'm going to say unfair liability and compensation with this? Was it going to be you know whoever administered it? Is it going to be the machine? Where's the next layer of liability of which the attorneys will receive a third? So is this just a money-making opportunity that people see in the people of Flint? Yeah, I mean, that's that, Flint is the only place I know where somebody can come in and become a millionaire, and the people here in the city of Flint doesn't care. At I the mean, expense of the people in Flint. At they the expense, I mean, we're, they, they're tired. We didn't fought for seven years. And the people here in the city of Flint is tired. And the people that they put in office, they expect them to go in and do what's right for them because they are tired. And once they get in office, they allow all these people to come in and contribute to their campaign. And you know what? It's okay. Just go and take the money, go back to New York, go back to Philadelphia, go back to Florida, go back to California, wherever you come from. Go back in harmony. You are now a millionaire because you came in and robbed the people here in the city of Flint. And the people in the city of Flint are still with drapes on their house, blue tarps on their house, Roman noodles, 42% poverty level. The, uh, I haven't had a school built since 1976. We had to fight GISD. Go ahead. Art, what, what, is, money. what is one thing or two things that can be done right now that the people of Flint want done that just seems to be tied up in, uh, you know, bureaucratic bullshit? Is there one thing or two things that can be done right no, now? No, just one thing. One thing. Just one thing? Yeah, let's just do yeah, that. No, we don't got all day. <laughs> what is the one thing that the people all over the planet that listen to this program, what's the one thing? Thing, first place that needs to go on in Flint. 
we need to change uh, all the elected officials and leaders here in the city of Flint and, and get somebody that's going to fight for us. I mean, that's the only okay, thing. Okay, what do you want them to do? So what will it. they do? We got new officials. We got new officials. What's the first thing you want them to do? Oh, bring in all the people that, that was here before and make them test and look at everything that they, when they left, look at everything and just, and look and see what's all been done, where, where we are, put hard deadlines uh, on what needs to be done. Look at all the resources that were here that has left. Which resources do we need to bring back? Which resources do we still need? I mean, it's a lot, man. I mean, you can't just do one thing. Then you so got to here, so going here, on. so here. What you're saying, what Flynn needs to begin with, is a forensic audit. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, but Mayor Neely said that he did that. I mean, well, where is so, it? Where but is but it? here's the thing, right? It's so much money that came in here, and so many different places that you just can't do a forensic audit, the money did not come through Flint. The money came through, like, Community Foundation, right, Genesee right, right, County, right. GISD. I mean, the state itself. But I mean, I'm the not, money was... I'm not uh, an engineer, but the solution would seem simple. You know, everybody talked about, you know, replacing the faucets or whatever. With the time and the money that has come through, but not to Flint, couldn't all the pipes have been redone and make sure that everything that was compromised replaced and compensate those people that were negatively impacted and we would have been done with this by now? You know what? J.P. Eagle from California came in uh, back in 2016 and they asked, could they come in? They was going to give us free piping. And mm -hmm. if you look it up, you'll see it where the legislators was like, hey, you know what? Why not? use them and let them come in and change all the piping. Well, then there's no money and free things being given to the people here in the city of Flint. Everybody oh. wants to make money off of this emergency. We, what That's we say, they, what we say is this. You cannot allow emergencies to die without making something off of it in a politics. What a we say is world. this. There's, there's so much money in poverty. Yep. It's a right. cycle. So look, we'll say this. We're going to jump. I'll call you later. We're on it. Let us know when we should focus our attention on some things in Flint, right? Hey, hey. so so, so here's what I need to ask you, uh, uh, Charlie. Yeah. The lady that was on here that's from Fox. Yeah. Can you call her yeah. and yeah. ask her to do a, 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 a segment about what's going on with our lawsuit. That's what we need. We okay, need okay, for this okay. to be heard She's not doing around that. the nation. She's not doing that. She's not doing that. You know why? Because she's got an issue that she's trying to deal with in New York, and she's a meteorologist. So what I would say, brother, is where's the fucking media that represents us again? Stop taking <laughs> the easy shit. Hey, hey, man, listen, I'm fighting with them, too. They I don't know. even interview me. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, even gonna, I mean, I'm not even gonna, like, fight anymore. Like, I, I said what I gotta say, and... I'm, I'm, so, I'm so grateful for you right now, because you, you're about the only person that will at least let me come on your podcast and, and speak the truth, you know? So, so I'm grateful for you. But asking somebody else, I mean, M Live did a story yesterday about this, uh, uh, this piece of equipment they, they made it look like nothing's wrong, nothing to see here. We're going to interview Napoli, who brought it in, and he's going to tell his bunch of bullshit, and I breathe let's it. move on. Not I breathe the letter it. from the manufacturer going cease and desist. This is for, is it for human use. End of story. Thanks, Arthur, and we'll be back in touch, brother. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, man. I, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Karen, how much? That's is that fucked up or what? No, that's crazy. That's not even an insult. That's not insubordination. That is blatant disregard. You called it something, Charlie, before we went on. You want to bring that up? I think I did it on, on the air. I think the Tuskegee experiment where for like 50 years, the federal government was telling African-American men that uh, they were trying to fix their blood disorder when they had raging syphilis going on and they were just watching them and penicillin had been invented yeah. that could cure it and they didn't cure it. So it seems to me like in Flint, a bunch of fat cats got together, 
came up with some cockamamie water scheme, got rich. Nestle's charged nobody in the racketeering, even though the case was going on. Now we're using mining equipment to take pictures of pregnant women. It's not safe for people. In the water I mean, still. The judge sucks. is okay <laughs> with it. The attorney general is objecting to the objectors. In the water is still garbage. And I, and I feel bad because residents keep looking to every person that comes before them hoping that they are the ones that will honestly, legitimately, sincerely, and thoroughly resolve their issue, and they just keep getting kicked along like a like an empty can. That that's 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 horrible. That that is horrible. Uh, some bullshit. But you know what? Look, there's some there's some good news. Are you are you looking for work? This I'm proud of this. We have a new sponsor. Yeah, this is great. New lover of the program. Mm -hmm. And we love them. Dig it. Dig this. Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers Local 2 need skilled bricklayers and caulkers to help build and restore projects throughout Michigan. Want better pay? Like real pay? Union pay? Where it gets up to 33, 34 an hour plus benefits yes. in a pension? You want that real pension? I that do. won't run out? Fully paid health care insurance plus up to $2,000 signing bonus? Benefits! Really, don't wait. The demand for skilled trowel trades is at an all-time high. They also have apprenticeships and free training opportunities for those looking to get started in a great career. Start building your future now. Dig it. Get going. Get going in a real career, a skilled trade. You go to bricklayers.org. Let me spell it. B-R-I-C-K-L-A-Y-E-R-S.org. Bricklayers.org. And click join BAC. That's simple. They're looking. You're in now. They need you. Get there. Get in now. This is one for life. That's awesome. Working people. Mm -hmm. Working people looking for people to work in a career, not a job. Huh? So, I, I know we aren't talking about this, Charlie, but you know, to offer a grant for small businesses um, to temporarily pay $15 an hour and then the company pays. Isn't that setting these businesses up for additional failure because if they could afford to pay $15 an hour, they would? I'm asking for yeah. a friend. It's, it's political year bullshit. It's what it is, right? The government would have... I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, this is my libertarian streak. If they were so <laughs> smart, you know what they say? Politics what? is for people too dumb to do business. <laughs> <laughs> you always got, got the finger in the middle of shit and fucking it up, right? Uh. Now, I, listen... I be an entrepreneur because people that you know think too myopically from a corporate perspective aren't able to apply and navigate and be flexible you know to adapt to the different variables that they face in business so they'd have to have some entrepreneurial traits so i'm going to say this you know we we it's it's 20 years ago is 9 11 we're going to remember it through the season and thank you brick Lagers. you're going to sponsor that segment because Working people are the true blue. Those are the ones I remember in New York doing the real work. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us, new friends. So before we go, once we leave, I want you to stay and watch, watch the video. It's by a guy named Brandon Parker. It's really top notch. Uh, it's basically about a um, baby shower. It's just, it's in Ferndale. It's just a little slice of life in the city. Gender reveal. Yeah. Uh, gender reveal. Big party. I know. I, I'm That's... calling it a baby shower. I know. Okay, you can, These kids gender today. Yeah, you know, do, do what you want to do, right? It's a lot of words to call it. Uh, uh, he's going to come start working with us, do a little bit of work. want to introduce him and his work to the No Bullshit News Hour audience. Hopefully, he'll be doing some work with Red and me. Um, but anyway, this week we remember... Um, Pete Carroll. I wrote this for the New York Times 20 years ago. They called him Pete the Painter. Pete Carroll was really a firefighter, but he painted apartments to make ends meet. He walked into Tony Ann's life eight years ago and laid two coats of beige paint. He had 19 years in the fire department, one more, and they were off to retire in California. They depended on each other. But last January, Mrs. Carroll came to depend on him in very profound ways. She fell ill with a neurological disorder with no cure. It is a rapid, ravaging affliction that attacks the soft tissues. Mr. Carroll, 42, started to cook for his wife. He carried her to bed. Sometimes he bathed her back. This summer, on the hottest day of the year, 
He came home to Staten Island from the Squad One Firehouse in Brooklyn to see her in the backyard, frozen in a chair in the blazing sun. He saw that and wept. I had a beautiful fireman to rescue me, Mrs. Carroll said. Now I don't want to move at all. In a contorted way, Mr. Carroll's wife is one of the lucky survivors. She at least has his ashes and his wedding band. Never forget. Try to love one another. See you next week. Maybe in the future. When you see me, you gotta be so